It's your girl Roxy with Roxy Says, and we're going to talk about it. If this is your first time here, welcome. And if you are returning, welcome back. So if you do not know, Love is Blind is currently casting in Washington, D.C., Denver, Colorado, and Minneapolis, okay? So if you are single and you are looking for your person, make sure you run over to Kinetic, honey, because they're trying to help you out. And if you live in D.C., your chances might be even higher of getting picked because they're having some issues casting in that area. Season here in D.C., except there's a caveat or more so a problem. They can't get people to fill the positions for that show in D.C. Apparently, they are scouring the DMV for anyone who wants a star in this next season. I'm sure that they'll find who they need to find, but I do think one of the main issues that they're having in D.C. is a lot of people who live in D.C. or work in D.C., have government jobs. They're not trying to lose that security clearance for y'all crazy show. They're not trying to be dragged online and then leave with nothing, okay? They're probably like, hell no, this shit ain't worth it. And I think another reason why they might have trouble casting is because after season one, honestly, in my opinion, I feel like every season that followed has tainted the show. Season one, we were all at home, okay? We were glued to our TVs and we fell in love with these couples, we looked at Love is Blind as a legit way to find love, right? And what really got me to thinking about this is because about two days ago, I got an email from a casting director. Now, I haven't discussed this much with you guys, but I am a singer-songwriter. That is one of the things that I do. And over the years, since I was like, I don't know, like 12 years old, my parents have always taken me to auditions here and there. I've made it through a couple of rounds on different shows like The Voice and American Idol. Like I made it to Hollywood. Hollywood on those. I've won American, American, I've won American Idol. Girl, no, you didn't. No, you did not win American Idol. I've won Showtime at the Apollo a number of times. Don't look for me on American Idol or The Voice though, because I did not make it to the TV screens, okay? I'm not there. You're not going to find me. You know, so that's just things that I've done. And through those auditions and other things that I've done, I have been able to keep in contact with some casting directors, right? So this email that I received a couple days ago was from a casting director asking me to audition for a show that has absolutely nothing to do with singing. Was it Love is Blind? No, it was not Love is Blind, but it is a reality show, but it's for dancing. I'll, I'll say that. I'm not, I'm, I'm not gonna say the show because I might still do it, honey, okay? But it's for dancing, pretty much. And this casting director told me that she got my information from another casting director from another show that I was a part of, and she kept me in mind, and she forwarded my information. For that, I'm so thankful for, and I emailed her, and I was like, thank you, girl. <laughs> but this show isn't really up my alley. So my first thought was, now why the hell would she send my information for that show that has nothing. Girl, you know I don't be dancing. I mean, I could dance, but that's not what I do, right? And then my second thought was, it would be good exposure. Hmm. I'm watching Bridgerton tonight. I'm binging Bridgerton tonight. Queen Charlotte, like, period, bitch. And that's what got me to thinking more about Love is Blind and all of these love and dating reality shows as a whole. The good thing about Love is Blind is that it's super unique, right? It's something that we've never seen before. You're falling in love based on what's on the inside, what really matters, because you cannot see this person. And we know that this show has produced some successful couples. And I say successful because we are not in anyone's home. We don't know what's really going on, but there are some couples who are still together and who appear to be thriving, right? From season one, we still have Barnett and Amber. They're still together, even though they've made it very clear that they cannot stand the show, Love is Blind, and they don't want anything to do with it moving forward. And we have the king and queen, Lauren and Cameron, right? Side note, Cameron did a video yesterday. I think it was yesterday. And in part of his video, he briefly discussed the situation with Marshall asking Jackie back for the ring take a listen to what he had to say the question uh is about the rings because we saw in season four marshall was asking about rings wanted the ring back from jackie the show provides the rings the show pays for provides the rings you get to pick one of the rings amongst a set that they provide and that's how it went so i was a little surprised when marshall asked for it back i think my perception of that was that he was hurt in that moment 
And he's like, dang, I need to get something out of this because this was a wash, right? Listen, I'm so happy that Cameron, someone that we really do all love and we respect and we think is a smart man, was able to say like, I was confused that Marshall asked for the ring back. Like I said in my other videos, like Marshall asking for the ring back was out of pure pettiness. And like someone commented in one of my previous videos, I think that everyone was just so angry at Jackie was and is so angry at Jackie that they wanted her to pay in some way and the only way that she could possibly pay was by returning this ring to Marshall but like Cameron said he felt like like why are you asking her for the ring back like bro we don't buy these rings like it's strange to ask for it back so I'm just happy that Cameron the king of love is blind okay said what he had to say because I totally agree. Back to the couples. So from season two, no one is together. Nick and Danielle did get married from season two. And as we know, they have some horrible things to say about the working conditions while they were filming Love is Blind. Nick has actually started his own organization advocating for better working conditions for people while they're filming these reality shows because he said that they were working crazy hours, there was sleep deprivation, they weren't getting water, they were getting paid horribly. It just sounds like it was the worst worst experience ever. Also from season two, we got Jared and Ayana, child, and we know what happened with them. Go check out my last video where I dragged Jared, but those two are also not together any longer. From season three, Alexia and Brennan, and then Matt and Colleen are still together. Yikes. Now that relationship has actually lasted longer than we've all expected. <laughs> and then we know all the people who are still together from season four, Bliss and Zach, Kwame and Chelsea, Brett and Tiffany, and is there anything else? And is there Brett and Tiffany? Yeah, that's it, right? Okay. So it's safe to say that there is a possibility that you can find your true love from this show. But I do think that season after season, we are seeing more reasons why Love is Blind might need to go back to the drawing board to ensure that these people are really here for the right reasons. Remember when Zach called out Irina at the reunion? If we're real, you went on this show to get famous. Now we all totally agreed with Zach, but in the back of my mind, I was still like, mm, I think to some extent, no one there is upset with any of the added exposure or fame that they can get from being on this show. Come on now. Even if you're genuinely going on the show for love, I don't think that you'd go into the situation looking at the added fame as a negative thing. I think it would be the cherry on top for most people. We know that after people do these shows, they can come out as the golden couple. Some of these contestants now have hundreds of thousands of followers. They're able to build their brand. They're able to gain more exposure. They get endorsement deals. They get sponsorships. They're making making appearances on different news stations, on different TV shows. So doing a show like this could be really beneficial to a lot of people. And not to mention doing a reality show, it's a once in a lifetime experience. You get to meet people that you've never met and you get to go places that you've never been before. And then if you're someone who truly went there for love, like I believe Lauren and Cameron did, all of the extras that come along with finding love also serves as a cherry on top. Cause listen, Lauren and Cameron, they just got a studio, right? They have books, they have a large following, they have their YouTube channel. So I'm sure that they're not complaining about all of the added exposure and money that the show has brought to their lives. I think that in comparison to a lot of the other couples that we've seen, Lauren and Cameron's experience is like, I won't call it perfect cause I'm sure that they've dealt with a lot of things behind the scenes, but from the outside looking in, it seems like they had the best outcome on Love is Blind history period and I don't think it'll ever happen again. Just because of how organic and real their relationship was and it was something fresh, the concept was something new. And now watching Love is Blind, I think that we give a lot of people the side eye. It's just not the same. So before you do a show like this or any reality show for that matter, you have to make sure that you are honest with yourself and you know what you're going there for. You also have to know who you are and stay true to yourself. Cause like we saw in season four, if you get on this show and show your ass, we gonna drag you. We don't care if you're a contestant or a host you gonna get dragged, okay? So this experience has to really be worth it to you. Is it worth losing your privacy? Is it worth putting your reputation at risk? With shows like this, you are not in the editing room. You're not in control. So there's a narrative that could possibly be created about you. Details about your personal life and all of your actions on the show will be scrutinized by the public, me, <laughs> us, right? We're watching, we're judging, yeah, we're judging. 
and we're commenting on it. That is something that a lot of people probably can't deal with or they're not expecting to receive that type of scrutiny on such a huge level. Look at Micah and Irina. They were horrible and they got dragged. Those girls got dragged, okay? Even though you got dragged for what you did, it can still have a horrible effect on you mentally or anyone who's done that type of reality show and experienced that type of backlash. And then at the end of the day, it's a TV show, right? So producers wanna make a good show. They wanna make an engaging show. They want the drama, they want the emotions, they want the conflict. And then as we see on the show, they cast so many people and we only see like eight people maybe. Meanwhile, in the house is like 20 some people. And the only way to get on camera really is to make a connection, which is also another problem, right? Because if you're someone who's genuinely there for love, how do you know that the person you're falling in love with really feels the way they feel or if they're just stringing you along to get more camera time? You don't know. So no matter what your intentions are, whether you're really there to find love or if you're really there for clout, it's still a sticky situation for everyone involved. But the good side to an experience like this is that you might meet someone who you would have never met otherwise. And this can be your person, your soulmate. I think for us watching the show on the screen, it's really inspiring to see some of these love stories unfold. We get to hear the conversations. We get to hear people being vulnerable, all things that are really important in a relationship. So there's definitely some pros and cons of doing a show like Love is Blind. You have to decide what's the net positive for yourself and for your life and for what you're trying to do. But I do think that ultimately there are more people who are joining the show for clout than for love. That's honestly what I think. I'm not gonna make a blanket statement and say, oh, everyone who's going on that show is just going for clout. But I do think that after seeing multiple seasons of what the show can do for you, that would definitely sway more people to wanting to be a part of the cast of Love is Blind or any other reality dating show. But we gonna be here watching and waiting, child, okay? And speaking of reality shows, I'm gonna be reviewing Housewives of Atlanta. It's coming on on Sunday. I love me some Housewives. So if you are a Housewives of Atlanta fan, make sure that you are subscribed because we gonna be in here acting a fool, okay? <laughs> let me know if you would audition for Love is Blind or for any other dating show. And let me know if you would audition, would you be auditioning for Love or would you be auditioning for what it could do for your pockets, honey, or for your business. Be real, it's a safe space. If I was looking for love, I would definitely go on Love is Blind and it would be for both. It would be for love and for exposure, okay? I'm keeping it 100. It would be for both, period. <laughs> but let me know what y'all think down in the comments. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I will see y'all in the next video. Bye! says we're gonna Talk about it. Roxy says we're gonna talk about it.